This example is GFDT problem. Given class weight is 5, first we get the minimum. So we use this minimum, this function, get the minimum, 31. Then easily get the lower limit for the first class. Start from 30. So you see 30, then increased by 5 for each class. And the upper limit, you could write 34. That means you reach the 34 equals 34. Otherwise, 35, you need less than. That's why the second question, the third class in a closed interval. So it should be 40 to 44. If you write 40 to 45, then here is open interval. The frequency for the third class, here we use the count if function. So we could redo it. Then say criteria range, that means the data set. Then comma. So quotation mark greater than equal 40, comma. Then data set again, comma again. Then quotation mark less, you could just less than 45. If you use 44, you need a less than equal. Enter. So you get a 12. Then mean, we know we use the average this function, then choose the data set, so we could get this answer. And then round it to one decimal place. Number five, based on the given hint, you need to get all the frequency for each class. So you know, you, you type all the count if s and the quotations, that's kind of lots of work. The easiest way is to use autofill in Excel. Now let's get the frequency for the first class. Equals count ifs, then choose the data set. We lock the data. So press F4, then you see the dollar sign, then comma, quotation mark, greater than or uh, equals 30. Close the quotation mark, comma, then we choose the data set again, and F4, lock the data, then comma, then quotation mark is less than 35. Close the quotation mark, so you see, you can use the 34, then less than, and you add an equal sign, right? You, you 34 is close interval, 35 is open, so no equal sign. And you lock the data, then enter, you get a 4, then you drag it down. You might ask why you don't give the training to Excel. Say, I could say grade or equal, I choose a 30, I just click this cell, then the 34. Here, in Excel, if the number is inside the quotation mark, then you can't give a training. You have to manually type the number. That's why I just partial autofill. So I got to drag down and I get everybody with the number 4. Then I click the number 4 because this, this criteria, the lower bound is 35, no longer 30. Then I change it to 39, then enter, so you get for this class. So the same thing here, here should be 40, right, 40, then here become 45, then enter. Still lots of work, but you much better than you each one, you retype the count ifs, then you know quotation marks. So now we get to the 19, this, that means this class from 50 to 50 for this interval, we have 19 numbers in this interval. Then, based on the definition of the mode for the GFDT, this is 50 plus 54, lower limit plus upper limit, lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2, so we get a 52. If, you know, you want to get a population, then deviation, then just dot P, here is dot S. So we choose the data set, so we get the samples and deviation. Five numbers summary. This is a minimum, we got a minimum. This is a maximum, we got a maximum. Then Q1, here I just use quartile.inc, inclusive. And I have a video, see, you can use the EXC, you will get a slightly different answer. And this is Q2, you just choose two. And a Q3, this U3. So I could just redo this Q3 file, INC. 
then array is this data set, comma, then I choose three because the third quartile, then enter. And this 88 is maximum. Then we could easily get IQR is based on the formula Q3 minus Q1. So it's 58 minus 40, 14. And the what usual score it has the largest positive, this score less than the goes to. So here, positive means greater than zero. Let's get a z equal zero is, is just mean, right? Because this score, that's the, remember this score, the formula is data minus mean divided by STD. That's why we could get the data, each data is z score times standard deviation plus mean. So when z is zero, it's just mean. It, we just use this 5775 and z equal two. So this go two times standard deviation here. We have the standard deviation plus mean. So now we know you actually you need to find a data in this data set is greater than 51. Otherwise your z score will not be would be negative, right? You need above the mean. So you need above the mean to uh, we just do rounding, right? 51 and you could hear just 50. You know you have some number definitely greater than 50. So your 51, 50, it doesn't really matter because we want to find the largest. Then less than 71. Very close to this score two. So less than two, but not over two, not greater than two. So we need to find the data in this interval, but find like several numbers than the biggest one. So we know H kind of close to 71. We have match, lookup, uh, all these kind of functions. But because we use a simple data set, we don't even build a table yet. We don't have like the headers, like what this column means, what this column means. So we just use a simple way, just kind of like a little bit manually. So I just copy the data set here. We just sort the each column. And when you're doing the sorting, you can just click each column, then go here, sort and filter. You could choose like smallest to largest. Then it would have this warning box. You choose continue with the current selection. The lineup in the increasing order or decreasing order. So I use the increasing order. So you see from the smallest to the largest, we only focus on the last row. In less than 71, then we, the Z score could be less than two. So look, 64 is the answer, right? Less than 71, but the biggest. This also less than 71, but the 64 is much closer to 71. So we get the answer. The last question, we have the formula. So you just get here the interval, the lower bound use Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. So 79 look, is Q3 is 58 plus 1.5 times the, this 14. So you get the 79 based on this first formula. And at the upper bound, 100, you could just, based on the formula, Q3 is 58 plus 3 times IQR 14. So you get a 100. So the answer is lower bound is 79, upper bound is 100. I hope this video helps.